in this nation is not strong we only have strong men just like nigeria is dying but we have strong politicians that's how the church is what you are seeing in our politics is a reflection of the church if you if you have seen nigeria very well you know what we are doing is not sustainable that's how the church what we are we are doing is not sustainable in the church society is always a mirror image of the church that is in the land i think i need to stop here so that we can have some time to pray it was when i was flying i was in flight that was when god began to speak to me about this that i'm sharing now so i was right on the flight because he was teaching me the way the church is in nigeria is not sustainable A radical set of ministers will rise again. Yes, I'm telling you. From 2009, I speak as a man that has found mercy to hear whispers from heaven. Found mercy of God. 2019, God began to choose people that will serve him in the church in Nigeria. Began to mark them. I saw the angels that were sent. By 2020, the functionaries were sealed. It was God himself that didn't allow some ministries to grow to explode quickly to preserve some functionaries the corruption has been huge many meetings have been held in heaven about the state of the church in nigeria because nigeria is the apostolic trigger for, for africa oh you think the politics is a big deal by a strike of god's hand if we cure it the deal the challenge in heaven is the church that god has done it to us before overnight he solved our problem answered our prayer point eh? it doesn't, doesn't say, oh my god i don't want to tell you much those are easy simple issues the issue that has been a headache in heaven fake people that have been raised to be fake to steal from people to lie fake word of knowledge that is by research not no revelation there is research this thing have continued for more than 15 years some men have been working in it for like 15 years all kinds of uncleanliness and adultery it's like a game and god kept quiet heaven has been bothered about the nigerian church because anything you plant in nigeria it will it will shoot out in zambia to shoot out in in ghana i tell you this as a man that has been on the continent of africa crying for revival for long nation after nation i've seen the symptoms of our departure from god so strong in some lands it will still take the sons of nigeria to cure the problem that we created mm. by policy of heaven god had slowed down the rate of growth of some churches and kept some ministers busy so that they can preserve the purity of their seed so that calamity and chaos can be overpassed before another season is born over the church in Nigeria.
I speak in parables. I saw the spirits of just men made perfect, crying to God and say, and when we were intercessors in these nations, you promised us you will do this and it does not happen. Say, don't worry. It's a strategy that God is about to unleash. And that strategy will begin somewhere around uh, October this year. It will start. I will not say more than this. You need to go back to God and find out running with came from him. Or it's like the ballistic missiles that the Bible school graduates spoke about. The radical opposition against unrighteousness will rise from our midst. A purging, a massive purging. I speak in parables, will take place. And Nigeria shall be free. In 2010, I was on cable. So I got some invitations from about 17 nations. So I went to Jesus and said, Lord, you opened doors for me? Jesus said, I'm not aware of the doors you are speaking about. You are not aware. That was the day I said the name of my God is not breakthrough. <laughs> my own God, the one I'm serving. The next year, 12 doors to very good nations open. I went again. He said he's not aware of it. So I stopped asking. The third year, three nations opened. The nations were so poor that I, there was no need for me to ask him. And then he now, it's, it's him that came to me and said, the poorest I'm sending you to. <laughs> I'm sending you to the poorest, even though you have not asked, but just so that you will know. <laughs> it's my will. I pray to check it and the peace will just flood. I said, okay. That was the first time in my life I saw a crippled person walk in a public crusade. Do you know the kind of cripple I'm talking about? The guy's legs were twisted. And he had never walked since he was born. They put, you know, when I was coming into the, the city that I was supposed to preach, the pastors were on the road, this side and that side, and they were waving. I, I, they, I now told the pastor that invited me, Are we under attack? He said, No, these are the pastors of the land, they are welcoming. He said, Oh my God, this is wonderful. I didn't know why they were welcoming me. The reason was because there was no hospital in that area. The hospital, the care, healthcare system they have is when a man of God comes. Oh, oh. And are you with me? In order to clear my doubt that I did not come to see the beauty of the countryside, they, they say start with this cripple. They, that one, they put him on the, on the side. The old prophets that raised me up said, if people want to compel you to be a miracle worker, pretend as if you are not aware. That's what they thought. So they put him here. I concentrated all my preaching efforts this time. <laughs> yes, I, you don't, don't yield. Don't yield to anything. But while I was preaching, I started hearing the stage started shaking. And you know what God was doing? God started reversing the twist in slow motion, not in slow motion. <laughs> On the stage. Now, why was it happening? Was it because there was a great preacher? I was more surprised than the people. <laughs> it was happening because he sent me. Now, are you... 
Do you understand it? That was the only reason. And the, the crippled guy stood up, started walking. And then five other people that were crippled in the hall, when they saw, because they know him, they know the guy, they know the mom, the mom was there, the mom was already rolling on the ground. Five other people that were dead, that were crippled, that were using crutches, walking aids, they threw them away and they started walking. When they saw the guy walking. That was how miracles started flowing. It was not because I, I prayed and said, be he, no. The thing started by itself. And do you understand that? In that same service, 30 deaf people began to hear. 30. I was more surprised than the people that invited me, but they didn't know. And I went to the room I, to pray. I said, God, what are you doing? What? Then he now reminded me of those times when I had invitations that he did not sanction. If I had entered those doors, all right, some things would have happened. I would have remained on a path that is unauthorized till now. My God is not breakthrough. It's Jehovah. Then I will be achieving what that Bible school graduate wanted to achieve. Relevance and all of that and which is up from what God God will still be looking for a man to do what he called me to do so you can now see why he said I should be using the yellow buses for seven years so that I will know that it's not about me it's not about you it's not about you it's about me so as I am now I'm secure in him my security is in christ jesus oh i can be walking on the road it doesn't uh, it doesn't take away my consciousness of what i know i am in his presence a lot of people think they are serving jesus but they are serving self It was in that place, that same place. Someone came with a medical report, came with x-ray, some stuff. I prayed for the person. The person went back, took another x-ray, and the muzzle that was caught, it was replaced. Yeah. And he had x-ray evidence. Because that guy will never believe that Jesus can heal. God did that. That was how the man was humble. Very high intellectual in that country. Hallelujah. So that's the first definition of a minister. He speaks from heaven. Second definition of a minister, he is held up by Jesus. It means it's the grace of God that gives him the capacity to do those things. If you see me, I, I was born in Stamara. I can only talk fluently when I'm on the pulpit. Oh, I don't have the ability to talk like this naturally. Oh, you may not know. When the symptoms of stammering kick in, you will know that I don't have this ability. It has even improved. It has improved. Maybe, do you understand? When I was much younger, I was next to dumb. I couldn't communicate. That's why I pray for long. And I believe God will not heal me of my speech impediment. It's a prison that traps me in the place of prayer. And I came to tell you as a minister, it's not everything God will deliver you from. He will allow some to compel you to be seeking grace perpetually. pastor or the messenger to the church the vessel God uses to nourish the church is seen from that immortal mystical language as a star 
whereas the church bears witness into the territory the, the minister as the star is a luminary that is held up in the galaxies of God I will explain that because it's possible for you this check this I want to introduce a check by which you can know a minister that is of God and the one that is not of God God says that the angel of the church that happens to be the minister of the church is a star and is held up by Jesus's right hand it means if he's held up by Jesus's right hand it is the power the energy or the resource or the spiritual capital called grace that is the strength of a minister and he is a luminary that is held up in the galaxy of God now we'll use that metaphor to define the minister as we go on first thing about the metaphor of the star just like I said is a luminary held up in the galaxies of God give me John chapter 3 John chapter 3 Are you there in John 3? Okay, let's do from 31 to 34. John 3, 31 to 34. You know, I said the first definition of a minister is that he is a luminary held up in the galaxies of God. Scripture to confirm that and the implication of that de definition is John chapter 3, verse 31 to 34. It says, He that cometh from above is above all he that cometh he that is off the earth is earthly so we have two people that cometh the one that cometh from above is above all means he has authority beyond and over the one that is coming from the earth is earthly Secondly, this one that is earthly speaketh of the earth. So if we see what you are speaking, well, we know where you are held up. If we hear your voice and we see the angle from whence you are speaking, the one that speaks from the earth, if you are speaking from the earth, it is proof that you are not held up in the galaxies. Do you realize part of the reason for the ailment of the body of Christ is men that speak from the earth. And what that does is that it makes our objective, our scale of measurement to be earthly. It doesn't matter how old the minister is. Someone finished from Bible school and I was discussing with him. And he was talking to me with excitement that he is in custody of two intercontinental ballistic missiles that have the capacity to take two cities. See, his driving force for ministry is that he wants to go and succeed. Speaking from the earth. So, after all the time he did in Bible school, that's what he came up with. What he sees is, I must do something to make people know that I'm not feeling. And I need to do it quickly. 
to register the impact of my capacity meanwhile are you with me meanwhile most trainings in the body of christ is towards result but if you are going to be a witness to witness unto him your training is to help you know how to be faithful so i hope you know that the kind of training that will give you that eye view of faithfulness to the christ is a different kind of training from the one that you come out looking for two cities you want to make you see are you here when you are all you are doing is to be faithful to him he is the one that will be responsible for the expansion <laughs> and i assure you he can do better than your your intercontinental ballistic missiles A point comes when if we isolate one person from here and send you to a place where Jesus is not because of your presence rooted in that place after five years Jesus is supposed to become popular for many years the Nigerian church camped around the doctrine of breakthrough and that became the focus it became our goal it became our objective so when people that were not born again saw okay our objective is results how many cars do you have packed what is the size of your congregation what's the kind of influence you have among men they say we don't need god to do this we went to the devil and said do you have a product that can make people gather you have a product that can bring influence you understand that and they came back to church with the product and they now had the crowd now had the influence the influence became even more than the influence that people that used god to rise had today we have a problem of priesthood of understanding them there are two streams of ministry and if you have christ as your objective you are not likely to grow as fast as someone that is using jazz I know this from the Bible. Are you with me? Yeah. You are not with me now. You are not following me now. When Cain, Cain left the presence of God, that means Cain doesn't want to have dealings with God, doesn't want to have God's government regulate his life. He wants to be free. So he departed from the presence of God and set up a city in the land of Nod. Are you with me? Meanwhile, Adam and the rest of the people still were, were camping outside of the Garden of Eden hoping that God will show up. So there were two races of men. When you see in the book of Genesis chapter 6, it says as men began to multiply. That's the descendants of Cano. They grew faster than the, than the guys that were. Meanwhile, it is those guys that were outside of Eden when, what's his name? When Adam now gave birth to Seth, the way God began to come back was that he, he endorsed the lineage of Seth. But I'm going to come through this lineage. So Seth now gave birth to Enos. And it was at the time of the birth of Enos that men discovered prayer. Are you with me? the are you there yes. in genesis chapter 6 the guys that left the presence of god they had an explosion righteousness doesn't produce results quickly no that's not it but it, although it has generational implication it can it is in fact can run across generations it can survive oh a thousand generations but in the patriarchs of righteousness the people that are pioneering it they are going to carry a very very serious body and when you want to use the parameters of of men to 
size them, you'll be wrong. But what their life is about to produce, many generations will anchor on the foundation that they have laid. For, for instance, if God wants to do anything, he, will, he has to stand on his covenant with Abraham. Those are men of stature that give God access to the territories of men through the life of consecration that they lived. I want my life to be like that. Whether you like it or not, the Daosa cannot be raised from the, this earth. There were things he did in the spirit that God will still take advantage of to implement policies on it. That's how Abraham was. He found how to align with heaven and he became a platform for heaven's dealings. Exactly. You can be the reason why he will step into your family. So we have a lot of activity going on in the body of Christ, which is not necessarily ministry. And the fact that the person that pioneered it is old doesn't make it any different. So, the church, according to the symbol of the metaphor, is a lampstand in the territory. Is that clear? right now who is the minister he said the seven stars which you saw are the angels the angelos of the churches the word angelos is messenger and that uh, the messenger to the church the instrument that God uses to minister to the church is not a spiritual angel it's a human personality now listen do you see the metaphor that was used to depict pastor 